In this video, we describe how to perform permanent his bundle pacing in daily clinical practice. We have been performing his bundle pacing at our collective institutions for several years. In the past five years, we have attempted his bundle pacing in all patients who have indications for implantation of a permanent pacemaker. Our success rate has been greater than 85% in recruiting the his bundle. Basic equipment needed for the procedure include a seven French peelable sheet, or a retaining wire in case access is required after the his sheath is split. The C315 his sheath, which has two curves, a primary curve which helps reach the annulus and a secondary curve that helps reach the septum, and a dilator that goes through the sheath to straighten it out as it is introduced into the vascular space, and finally a J-wire that is introduced through the dilator to help place the tip of the sheath in the right atrium or right ventricle. The entire apparatus can be preloaded outside the body with the J-wire placed at the distal tip. This makes it easier to place the entire apparatus within the 7 French short sheath into the right atrium or right ventricle. The dilator, sheath, and the guide wire are all advanced together through the 7 French sheath. The guide wire is then placed either in the right atrium or into the right ventricle and the entire sheet and the dilator are advanced into the right atrium. Once the sheath is advanced into the right atrium, the dilator and the guide wire are then removed, thereby leaving the distal tip of the sheath either in the right atrium or right past the tricuspid annulus into the right ventricle. The pacing lead is then advanced through the sheath until the distal tip of the lead is exposed outside of the sheath near the tricuspid annulus. If the lead tip is in the atrium, gentle advancement of the sheath with clockwise rotation can help reach the his bundle region. Likewise, if the lead tip is in the ventricle, gentle pullback with counterclockwise rotation can help reach the his bundle area. Unipolar connection is then made with the proximal connection made to skin contact, while the distal connection is made to the distal tip of the lead as demonstrated here. In this situation, as long as the distal tip is exposed, good electrograms can be recorded. It is very important to pay careful attention to the electrograms on the PSA. In this case, you can see right before the local ventricular EGM, there is ST segment elevation, and right prior to that, there is a small deflection consistent with a his deflection. Sometimes a printout on the PSA can clearly show his deflections. In this case, there is a small atrial deflection followed by a his deflection, which is followed by a local ventricular electrogram. If clear his deflections are not seen, pace mapping can be performed to ascertain the exact location of the lead tip. Pacing is then performed without the lead being screwed in. We like to start pacing at an output of 5 volts at 1 millisecond and gradually drop voltage to see responses to various pacing outputs. In this case, at high output pacing, there is more his bundle recruitment with minimal fusion. We term this non-selective his bundle pacing. As the output is reduced, the QRS is widened, but there is still his bundle recruitment resulting in non-selective his bundle pacing. It is very important to pace at varying outputs as various responses can be seen. At high output pacing, pure his bundle recruitment can occur in cases where there is a naked his bundle. More commonly, at high output pacing, there is fusion with the local myocardium and his bundle capture. As pacing output is reduced, selective his bundle capture can occur at very low outputs. In fact, very selective pacing of the right bundle or left bundle can also be demonstrated with reducing outputs. Gentle forward traction is then applied to the lead tip as well as the sheath. The lead is then rotated in a clockwise direction four to five times. It is very important to gently rotate the lead and to feel the torque being transmitted to the tip of the lead. Once the lead is let go, it has a tendency to unwind. This usually confirms that the lead tip is well anchored. 
the sheath is then gently pulled back on fluoroscopy as the lead is advanced. A certain amount of slack is allowed for the lead tip to sit well within the right atrium. At this point, it is very important to check pacing thresholds and for his panel recruitment in both unipolar and bipolar configurations. In this case, the local ventricular EGMs clearly show excellent vent local ventricular injury, thereby confirming that the lead tip is well anchored within the myocardium. At this point, pacing is then performed at varying outputs. In this case, there is non-selective his bundle capture. The QRS morphology is wider than the intrinsic QRS with the stimulus to QRS that is shorter than the intrinsic HV interval. The output is then reduced to see if there is further QRS widening confirming his bundle capture. This is very similar to parahisian pacing that is performed in the lab usually to delineate septal accessory pathways. In this case, there is a clear example of VA conduction seen on the 12 lead ECG. On lead 2, which is the second lead from the top, retrograde P waves can be clearly seen. At lower outputs, the VA interval is longer compared to at higher outputs. Here lead AVR is being pointed out with a retrograde P wave seen at the end of the QRS complex. Once again, lead 2, which is the second lead from the top, shows this the best. As pacing output is reduced further, the QRS width has not changed much. However, at very low pacing outputs, the retrograde P wave shoots out separating itself from the QRS, thereby demonstrating a longer VA interval. This can add a nice physiological confirmation that the His bundle is in fact being recruited and that there is retrograde conduction up the His bundle into the atrium. The sheath is then split with a splitter. It is usually helpful for someone to hold a short seven front sheath as the sheath is being split. It is highly unusual for the lead to be dislodged as it is well anchored into the myocardium. Slack is then confirmed on fluoroscopy prior to peeling the short seven French sheath. In this case, a permanent atrial lead was also placed. With his bundle recruitment at higher outputs, the local stimulus to atrial electrogram on the atrial channel can be measured. In this case, the interval is shorter at higher output. As the output is reduced to 1 volt at 1 millisecond, the local stimulus to atrial electrogram shoots out, and simultaneously, the QRS widens on the surface uh, ECG. This clearly confirms his bundle recruitment in this case. Based on our experience, we firmly believe that permanent his bundle pacing can be performed safely and effectively in daily clinical practice. Thank you.